Hey everybody, AmpericPeregrine.com, 203-892-4119, also HarbachElectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. So today we have a 30L1 in. I have it on some bubble wrap until I move it over to the rubber mat. So I'll go over everything I see that it needs, and then I'll show you everything when it's done. So I'm going to change the grid resistors, the grid mica caps, compress and clean the socket clips, Check the resistor for the bias over here. Clean the contacts on the TR relay. Clean the contacts on the input rotary switch. It has a aftermarket filter cap board in here, rectifier board. That's coming out. One of the resistors is damaged. These caps are only rated for 400 volts at 150 microfarads. Uh, I'm going to put in the Harbach board, 330 microfarads at 450 volts of 5,000 hour caps, just way better. It's a way better configuration than this. So, one of the straps at least is damaged. So, I'm going to change the braided material. It's all frayed right here. He had it taped, but I'm still got it all frayed up. So, check the air variable caps. They look okay. I clean the output rotary switch, tighten up on stuff, change the electrolytic on the bottom, and oil the fan, change the meter lamp bulb, and Whatever else need that needs to be done along the way, I'll check the fuses to make sure they're the proper size and type. So stay tuned. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. 73 for now. So I'm back with the completed Collins amp. I'm going to take the video before I test it, and I'll show it working. So I've done all the work. I just don't want to take it all apart again. So I've done all the work. Show you what I did. Change the grid resistors. Check them; they're way out of tolerance. I always change them, but I check them after. Added gas discharge tube, one per side of the filament. So people ask, why do I do that with this, and not the SB2 uh, 200? Okay, easy. Because this takes 811s normally, and I always tell people you can't use Chinese 811s in the horizontal position. So the customer knows that. So let's say he sells it to someone, he puts 811s in, and one fails, which it will eventually, um, flashes from the anode back to the grid, it'll end up blowing up all sorts of stuff if you don't have these, okay? These will help. And they're like a buck, and they can't, they're not permanent, they can always come out. So I always put 572s in. I don't, even if it, any amp, no matter what, I always put 572s in, they're just, built better. There's just a way better tube. I'm not going to get into that. I always swap them. So, okay, so I compressed the socket clips, cleaned them. So, like I said, the new grid resistors, the new 220 puff caps, mica caps. The lead lengths were like really long, so it's all done. Clean the relay over here. The resistor for the bias, that was way off. It was about 70 ohms. So, replace that it's behind the connector. So I replaced all the, the two straps. They're good. Parasitic suppressors were fine. Clean the rotor switch with deoxygold. gold. Also the input rotor switch with deoxy gold. Has the brand new Harbach filter cap board. Put a better series glitch in there. 10 ohm, 10 watt. Some of the wiring was like kind of funky, so I redid that. Here's the other board. So, yeah, one of the... Actually, both of the resistors were damaged, but the the um, carbon uh, glitch resistors, series glitch resistors, were not damaged. So that's kind of weird. I don't know what happened there. So anyway, got the new one in, new uh, meter lamp. I'll flip it over and I'll show you the bottom. See you soon. Oh yeah, had the wrong fuses in it. Slow bow fuses. So I actually have to go get fuses before I can test it. So, big no-no, don't, you always want to use the right fuse, okay? Very, very important. I've said it a million times. Okay, see you guys soon. Probably oh, yeah, oil the fan, too. <laughs> I almost forgot. Okay, we'll be back. Here's the bottom. I changed the cap over here. Uh, one that was the wrong value. So, that's about it. Okay, so, I also cleaned the rotary switch up there with the Gold. so... I plug the tubes in, I have to go get the right fuses, and uh, put it back together partially and fire it up, see what happens. <laughs> so.
So stay tuned. We're back. We're doing the power test on 20 meters for the customer. That's where he wants to see it working. I've done all the other bands. Radio set to 20 meters. One kW slug. Key the amp with the foot pedal. Audio hello, hello, hello. 600 right there. Audio hello, hello. One kW slug. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Roughly 50 watts. Audio hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Amps. Audio hello, hello. Audio hello, 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 hello. And it works as it should. So thanks for watching. If you need an app repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. Website's amprepairguy.com. Also harbachelectronics.com. I forgot to mention, it's got a brand new set of Pentalab tubes. Awesome company. They keep tubes here. So I have them in stock all the time. They're owned by Penta. You just pay them direct and then they release them. And remember, you get the better deal. If you send your amp in, you call and order them. From Penta, while well, I have your amp here, you get a better price than if you bought them on Penta's site. So, again, thanks for watching and have a great day. 73. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to do a follow up video here. I've said before, I always start at the lowest band. I think I said in the last video I tested it on the, all bands, but I always start at the lowest and work my way up. And then once I get to the band the customer wants to see the video on, I stop and do that. So, once I got to 15 meters, start testing it. I heard like a little weird noise. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe a tube's arcing internally a little bit. Shut the lights off, didn't see anything. Didn't see anything from there, variable cap. So I'm thinking, you know, um, maybe I'll swap the tube, swap the tubes, same thing. So I'm thinking maybe the plate blocker is, because uh, it seemed to only do it after I was using it for a little bit. So I thought maybe a plate blocker has some leakage, it's arcing or something. No. No, no shorts. It wasn't popping fuses or anything, so I changed the plate blocker. I'm not going to charge him for it. So I'm like, what is going on here? So I shut it off, and I cleaned the switch really well with deoxygold. gold. Went away. No, no noise anymore. I'll show you. So it's on 15 meters. Audio hello, hello, hello. Audio hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Tit, 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 tit. Tit, 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 So I was also doing it on 10, so... It's like when it was heating up. It was like a weird, like a, like a little arcing noise. So um, I'm going to let it sit, and then I'll try it again tomorrow. If there's nothing, then I, I told the customer and said, I don't have a switch. I don't have to change it if I don't have to. He had a tube flash. He said a, he had a hole in the anode. So the um, switch probably took a hit, and you know, I cleaned it really well with deoxygold. gold. So it probably had some pitting or, or some carbon or something on it. And so... It's uh, working, but every once in a while you see something you haven't seen before, and that was a first. So I can only hear out of one ear, so figuring out where noises are coming from is really difficult. I could tell it was coming from this area in the Arctic area, but you know, that's why I flipped the switch off and I look carefully. But that's about it. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I am done for the day. I am tired. Time to eat dinner. So catch y'all later. 73.